uh, I went to the induction center. They did a real quick physical because uh, they hadn't done that before. So it was like at that point they put you through the induction process. You don't do anything prior to that except sign the, excuse me, sign the papers. Uh, I got to the induction center. It's oh yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. I got to the induction center, and um, we got sworn in. We filled out papers, and of course, I lied on the papers. I said I wasn't gay, uh, okay. and I, I resented having to do that. But hey, I'm there, and what are they going to do to me? You know, I could have walked away from it right then and there, but I had nothing to walk to. Right. I had taken the, the last four months, the four months that they gave me before I, I was inducted, clearing up everything, you know, getting all of my stuff. It was, it's like uh, the opportunity to get everything in order before you dock. So and I pretty much equated it with, this, with that. But, but um, I, uh, it had nothing, nothing, I had no job. I, you know, it was just, I was just out there. I probably could have found something if I wanted to, but I wanted to investigate this to see where it would take me. It, it didn't seem so bad at the time. Okay. And it wasn't bad. It just, I, I got real tired real quick with people barking orders at me. Okay. You know, like quicker than I probably should have because I'd been out on my own for two years. And you don't tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just don't tell me what to do because it, there's a whole number in my head. So, uh, so that was a, a bit of a problem at induction. But um, they swore us in, and then they gave us our orders. And I had been told for four months that I was going to Great Lakes to, to boot camp. And on the orders they cut for me, it said San Diego. So I had them hold everything up. They had to unseal the orders and double check that I was in fact going to San Diego and not to Great Lakes because if I ended up in San Diego and I was supposed to be in Great Lakes, I'd be AWOL. Right. <laughs> so, so right away, I, I, right, exactly, right away, I started causing problems. <laughs> uh -huh. So and it continued. Uh, so I got uh, I got to San Diego. We we flew. Um, uh, from Cleveland to Dallas to San Diego and went through one hellish storm between Dallas and San Diego that would have made me turn back at that point. But I um, got landed in San Diego. We were all dog tired because we'd been up all day and we'd been going through all this crap and they took us to the airport and got us on a plane and uh, they treated us very nicely because once they found out we were conductees, that's when airlines actually, you know, were gracious. Okay. And, uh, so we, we did not go hungry, and we did, you know, we, we were good. Excuse me. We got to San Diego, got to, to the base, and were given racks, rack assignments. And we slept as best we could in strange places without noises. And uh, it wasn't comfortable. It just, and I thought, well, okay, I'm not going to be comfortable for the next four years. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was okay with that. Uh, the next morning we were up at four and then they started putting us through our, our um, registration period. And we um, got uniforms, or got work, work clothes. They didn't assign, give us the uniforms yet. We got work clothes, we got um, our haircut, and um, then we started with these little mini lectures. We would march quick time from one building to another, and we'd see yet another uh, chief petty officer or um, some other the ranking officer, um, and uh, they would give us these little talks about sex mostly and oh. sexuality and and uh, one of them that I, I distinctly remember because it prompted me to um, say something to my CO um, was that uh, 
if we were caught doing anything with another guy, we'd be thrown into the rig and we'd be court-martialed. 